turn on the TV and watch any NBA game. Actually, no, watch any basketball game at any level in any country in any league. And you'll notice that the three point shot is one of the fundamental facets of the sport. It wasn't always like that, though. When the NBA debuted its three point line in 1979, it was seen as a gimmick, something implemented to get fans more excited about a game that was far less popular than it is today. And while it was slow to gain traction, the NBA's marketing tactic was ultimately transformative profoundly reshaping the way basketball is played and paving the way for a modern game that revolves around the tray ball. The game of basketball, prior to the concept of the three-point line, was a game dominated by big men. Towering presences like Bob Pettit, George Mikan, Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had an inherent advantage over the rest of the competition because all field goals counted as two points. And the closer you were to the basket and the taller you were, the easier it was to put up points on the board. The first instance of a three-point line being used in basketball can be credited to Abe Saperstein, the founder of the Harlem Globetrotters, who had created the American Basketball League in 1961 in hopes of competing with the up-and-coming NBA. Saperstein thought that the smaller players were being forced out of the game, and the solution was adding a perimeter shot worth an extra point. The league ultimately couldn't stay afloat monetarily, but the three-point concept was picked up in 1967 by the five-time NBA champion for the Minneapolis Lakers, Mikan, who was now serving as the first commissioner of the American Basketball Association, another league trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the NBA. Mikan likened the three-point shot to a home run in baseball that would, quote, give the smaller player a chance to score and open the defense to make the game more enjoyable to fans. Mikan was ahead of his time. In the 67-68 ABA season, teams took on average five three-pointers a game. In the 2021-2022 NBA season, the Chicago Bulls, who averaged the fewest threes per game, averaged 28.8. In 1976, the ABA and NBA merged, but the NBA did not adopt the three-point line. It took three seasons after that for the NBA to get its fans, its players, and its most well-respected executives to sign on to implement the three ball back into the game, eventually adding the line on a temporary basis ahead of the 1979-1980 season, which was also the rookie year of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Still, there was a lot of pushback and skepticism. Legendary Celtics head coach Red Auerbach considered the rule a gimmick, saying that they should, quote, leave the game alone. Easy to say when you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine championship rings on your hands. Funny enough, it was Chris Ford of the Celtics who was credited for making the NBA's first ever three-point shot. Washington Bullets head coach Dick Mata, who had just won an NBA championship in 1978 and went to the finals in 1979, was very opposed to the new rule. Former Bullets player Kevin Gravy recalls Mata saying, Gravy, that's a gimmick from the ABA, and the coaches weren't consulted about this. We're not going to shoot the three-point shot. We're not going to get influenced by the shot. Nor are you. Get the ball down to Elvin Hayes. Overall, teams were very slow to warm to the three ball, as it also wasn't used at the collegiate level just yet. Bird said later that nobody even thought much about the three. In the 79-80 season, teams averaged 2.8 three-point attempts a game, with the San Diego Clippers leading the league with 6.6 .6 attempts per contest. Brian Taylor of the Clippers led the league in three-pointers made with 90, while Rick Barry came in second with 73, and a young Bird made 58 in his rookie season. Actually, Bird's willingness to take the three-point shot, his ability to knock them down at a very early age, and his eventual rise into a three-time MVP are all part of the reason why the shot became more popular. The NBA capitalized on that popularity by incorporating a three-point contest into its annual All-Star Weekend festivities in the 1985-1986 season with Bird as its main headliner. And the Big Bird did not disappoint, winning the first three contests, including the final one, in dramatic fashion. 25 seconds remaining, has only seven, has to beat 15. That's eight, make it nine, and 10. At 11, as we're counting, 13. A huge rack that time for Bird. We still gotta drop one here quickly, 14. This is a tie for the money. Yo! And Larry Bird at the buzzer with the two point ball. 17 to 15 defends the long distance shootout crowd at Chicago Stadium. 
By the time Bird collected his third consecutive three-point contest trophy in 88, the tray ball had become commonplace at all levels of the game in virtually every country. FIBA incorporated the line in 1984 for international play, the NCAA followed suit in 1987, and in 88, high school basketball also adopted its own three-point line. While the distance of these lines varied compared to the 23 feet 9 inches the NBA used, it set up the foundation for younger players to begin to practice and develop the three ball as a part of their arsenal. And lo and behold, the next handful of NBA drafts produced some of the best three-point shooters in history. Del Curry, Mark Price, Drazen Petrovic and Jeff Hornacek in 1986, Reggie Miller and Kenny Smith in 1987, Steve Kerr, Rick Barry in 88, BJ Armstrong, Glenn Rice, Nick Anderson, Sean Elliott, Tim Hardaway in 89, and Dennis Scott in 1990. This wave of shooters resulted in the first three-point specialist, players who were supposed to spot up in the corner and space the floor for their big men down low. By 1992, the tray ball accounted for almost 9% of all attempted field goals in the NBA. In the 94-95 season, the NBA decided to move the line forward to 22 feet in an effort to curb the decline in scoring that the league had seen in the past 10 seasons. But the line shift didn't change much. Despite shooters like Kerr and Curry going on to set NBA records, scoring was still going down, and the reduced spacing because the line was closer to the paint actually made it much harder to navigate through traffic. After three seasons, the league decided to move the line back to its original position, and it stayed that way ever since. Both the adoption of the three-pointer and scoring overall began trending dramatically up, starting in the early 2000s due to two significant rule changes. Zone defense became a legal defensive tactic after being banned for the majority of the NBA's lifespan, helping shooters get more open because players were finally allowed to double-team dominant big men in the middle like Shaquille O'Neal. And then, ahead of the 0405 season, the league officially banned hand checking, which gave offensive players more freedom of movement and helped teams play faster, leading to more three point shots, especially in transition. You can thank Steve Nash, Mike D'Antoni, and the Phoenix Suns, who introduced their seven seconds or less offense in that same season and led the league for three straight seasons in three point attempts for starting that trend. Between the 2000-2001 season and the 2010-11 season, NBA teams on average increased their scoring by 5 points per game, and the 3-point shot had become an integral ingredient of any given team's shot diet, amounting to 22.2% of all field goal attempts in the 2011-2012 season. By that time, Ray Allen had cemented himself as the greatest shooter ever, capturing the record for most threes in a season and most 3-pointers made all time. But there was still more room to grow, or space, rather. Enter Steph Curry and James Harden. It is well documented just how monumental Curry was in changing the way we look at the three-point shot, and as a result, the way we view the game of basketball through a modern lens. In 2012-2013, Curry broke Allen's record of 269 made threes in a single season by making 272. A couple of seasons later, he broke his own record with 286, and in 2015-2016, he did it again, but he didn't just break the record, he shattered it, making 402 threes in a single season, which is going to be one hard record to beat. And just 11 years after Allen passed Reggie Miller for the most threes all time, Curry passed Allen and currently holds the all time record with 3,117 threes made. Here's Curry for the record. It's good! There it is! Stephen Curry! The all-time three-point king in the NBA! Now, I mentioned Harden alongside Curry because the beard and his Houston Rockets were a big part of this revolution too. Before Harden's Rockets, no team had ever attempted threes on more than 35% of its shots. Daryl Morey, Harden, and the Rockets shattered that record by 2016-2017, shooting more than 45% of their shots from three and following it up in the three seasons after that by shooting over 50% of their shots from behind the arc. They too changed the game in an irreparable way. In just 10 years, the percentage of field goal attempts that were three-pointers for any given team jumped from an average of 24.3% in 2012, the first season Harden joined the Rockets, to 40% in 2022. Nearly half of any given team's shot repertoire comes from behind the arc now. 
and the efficiency of those shots has also gone up. In 1980, teams shot 28% from behind the arc. In 2022, teams hit the three at a 35.4% clip on average. Last season, teams averaged just over 35 tray balls a game, a 12.5 times increase from the first season that the three was implemented. And while Mikan and Saperstein only intended to give the little guys on the court more of an advantage when they first thought of the three-point line in the 60s, it's revolutionized the play of the big man too. In fact, every single position is shooting the three ball more and more. And as big men began to develop the outside stroke as part of their game, the stretch big became a common archetype in the NBA. In the end, it all comes down to value. Three is greater than two, and if you shoot more threes, then you will inevitably end up with more points on the board, especially corner threes that are nearly two feet closer to the basket compared to above the break shots. As a result, as the game has evolved, teams have opted for less long mid-range shots and instead focused their efforts on generating shots near the basket and from behind the arc, as seen by this chart from ESPN's Kirk Goldsberry. And that has impacted the game across the board, not just professionally. Now, shooting is emphasized as a necessary skill in grassroots programs everywhere. As a player, you are at a disadvantage if you can't shoot now, regardless of position or talent. Just look at the Ben Simmons situation as an example of what can happen when shooting becomes a consistent issue for a player. On the other side, the value of a three-point specialist has gone through the roof. Duncan Robinson signed a five-year, $90 million deal in the summer of 2021 with the Miami Heat for his sharp shooting abilities. Joe Harris inked a similar deal with the Nets for four years worth $75 million. The three-point shot went from being called a gimmick to making the game better by spacing the floor and allowing offenses to flourish, all while becoming one of the most valuable and fundamental aspects of modern basketball. So the skeptics in the 60s and 70s were half right. It did change the game, but it changed it for the better. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.